Hi there, Augie Kennedy here with Super Awesome Calculus, and uh, today we're still in Chapter 3, which is Differentiation Rules, and today we're going to cover a very, very important rule called the Chain Rule, which is one of the most important rules that we're going to go over in derivatives. Uh, last time, you may remember, we went over the uh, Product Rule and the Quotient Rule, and so today we'll look at, the, or no, we did that two times ago. Last time we looked at trigonometric derivatives, and that brings us to the big question from last time. I asked you, for what values of x does the graph of f of x equals x plus 2 sine x have a horizontal tangent? All right, now hopefully you remembered that when we went over the, uh, when we went over the trigonometric functions last time, we graphed them, and we drew horizontal tangents at some points. And judging from that, you can understand that a, a tangent line would have a slope of zero. So, what we're looking for is we're looking for what values this function, f of x equals x plus 2 sine x, has a slope of zero, a tangent slope of zero. So basically, we need to find out when the derivative is zero. So let's quickly differentiate this function. f prime x equals 1 plus 2 sine, the derivative of sine is cosine, 2 cosine x. All right, and we want to set that equal to 0. So 0 equals that. Now let's go ahead and let's do the arithmetic. Negative 1 equals 2 cosine x. Negative 1 half equals cosine x. So now the question is, is how well do you remember your trigonometric values? In other words, what values is cosine going to be negative a half? And if you remember, that occurs at the arc cosine. <laughs> that occurs at x equals 2 pi thirds. So, but remember, we're not quite done because the cosine is a periodic function. It keeps repeating every 2 pi. So every multiple of 2 pi thirds is going to be, uh, it's going to be legitimate. So we write the final answer as x equals 2n pi, any multiple of 2 pi, plus 2 pi thirds. If you managed to get that, great job. If not, if you at least managed to set up this correctly and get cosine x equals a half, or you wrote x equals arc cosine, arc cosine of negative 1 half, that's correct too. All right. Now, moving right along, today we're looking at the chain rule. Now, if you remember when we were examining the product rule, we had the question of whether or not the products of the derivatives equaled the derivative of a product. And we found out that, in fact, that's not the case. We had a product rule. But this, this notion of a product does come into play when we're dealing with the derivatives of composite functions. So the chain rule, I'm going to write it out, and then we're going to look at how it works. We're not going to prove it, but we're going to write it out. Basically, the chain rule says that if you have f of x, and f of x is a composite function of two different functions, f of x equals f of g, and f of x equals f of g of x, and it's differentiable at x and f prime, then, then, f prime x equals f prime times g of x times g prime x. Or, if you prefer a Leibniz notation, dy dx equals dy du times du dx if 
y equals fu <laughs> and u equals gx, g of x. So that looks, uh, that looks a little bit complicated, but what it's really saying is something very, very simple. It's saying that if you need to do, uh, differentiate a composite function, you're going to take the derivative of the outer function multiplied by the inner function and then times the derivative of the inner function. Let's see how this works in practice. Let's take this function. f of x equals the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay? Now what we have here, we can see that this is a composite function. It has both a polynomial, x squared plus 1, and a radical function, square root of x. So let's break this down. Let's call this um, f of u equals the square root of u, okay? And g of x equals x squared plus 1. Now we have two different functions. We have the square root of u and g of x equals x squared plus 1. So we remember that this is really f prime x is going to equal f prime u times g of x times g prime x. So let's go ahead and compute that. We know that the square root of u is nothing more than u to the one-half power. So let's go ahead. Let's multiply this out. f prime x equals the derivative of u to the one-half is one-half. We remember the power rule here. One-half times u to the negative one-half power. Because we take the exponent, the exponent and multiply, or uh, subtract one. And we multiply that times g of x, which is x squared plus 1. Okay? And then we multiply all of this times g prime x. So we see that g, g of x is x squared plus 1. We know how to differentiate that. That's 2x. So now we have all of this. And what we can do, we can write this out a little bit more cleanly and simplify. I, I know uh, the professor that I had was very nice, he'd accept this as an answer, but if your professor is a little bit more demanding, let's go ahead and let's show how to write this a little bit more cleanly. f prime x equals 1 over, it's, it's 1 half, because we have the 1 half here, now u to the negative 1 half, so square root, negative 1 half, means that it's going to be in the denominator. It's the square root in the denominator. Uh, and we know that if we're multiplying times x squared plus 1, we're going to be dealing with that under the radical. Times 2x, that means 2x is going to go in the numerator. And you can actually cancel out the 2's, so that f prime x is none other than x over the square root of x squared plus 1. And there you go. Now, you can use the chain rule with a great, with a very wide variety of functions. You can use the, you can use it with sine functions, trig, trig functions, exponential functions, um, and really, really, really long polynomials. You can use it multiple times. Um, let's let's look at this function. Y equals e to the sine of x. Yep. y equals e to the sine of x. So what do we have here? You can look at this and you can realize right away that this is a composite function. It has both the exponential function, e to the x, and then where x should be, it has another function, sine of x. So we write it like this. We choose f of u to be the outer function, e. So f u equals e to the u. And g of x equals sine x. So, we remember the product rule. 
So y prime is going to be the derivative of the outer, e to the u, while the derivative of e to the u is it's e to the u. times the inner, which is sine x, okay? And now we have all of this times the derivative of the inner, which is cosine x. But what's interesting here is that e to the u is sine x, so all we're going to have now is e to the sine x cosine x. And you can that's that's a fine way. That is a fine way to leave this answer. Uh, we'll do one more uh, exercise with a polynomial. Y equals x cubed minus one to the one hundredth power right there. All right, now we can see right here we're going to use a combination of the power rule from before and the chain rule that we just learned. So we have an outer function. The outer function, you read what is the biggest thing. Like, obviously the first thing that we're going to address is whatever's in that parentheses to the 100th power. So f of u is going to equal u to the 100th. g of x is going to be the inner function, x cubed minus 1. If it makes you feel better, we can, we can start calling this f of x again, if you want, as long as you keep, if, as long as you keep it all straight. All right, so let's look at this. The derivative of the first, the derivative of the outer. This is nothing more than a simple power function. So it's going to be 100 f prime x, or y prime, is going to be 100 times the inner, which is x cubed minus 1, to the n minus 1th power, which is 99. So 100 times x cubed minus 1 to the 99th power, times the derivative of the inner, which is x cubed minus 1, we know that's 3x squared is the derivative. Multiplying everything together, we get y prime equals 300 x squared times x cubed minus 1 to the 99th power. And that's how that works. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave you an exercise to figure out on your own. You can prove, I'm going to give you a formula and you can use uh, this trick, the chain rule, to prove it. It's true that the derivative, d dx, of any exponential, a to the x, equals a to the x times the natural log of a. That's true. If you like, I won't go over it, but if you like, you can try to prove this. What you'll need to know is that a is nothing other, using a, the uh, exponential identity, a equals e to the ln a. Now you're going to need to use some creative usage of pare uh, parentheses here to prove this, but you should be able to do it. All right, so that's basically everything you need to learn about the chain rule itself. We're not going to go over how to prove it, um, but that's the chain rule. And now I'm going to give you an exercise to use it. All right, so today's big problem is for you to differentiate the following function. And Norton just popped up. One second, here we go. Differentiate the following function. g of x equals one plus four x to the fifth power, that quantity to the fifth, times the quantity three plus x minus x squared to the eighth power. So you'll need to use the chain rule don't be afraid if you need to, if you feel like you need to use the chain rule multiple times, you can do that. Go ahead, good luck, and I'll see you next time when we're going to talk about implicit differentiation. All right, take care everybody.